Here is the area in Westlake Longjing Tea Production Zone before the Chinese Lunar Qingming Festival. Tea farmers have been planting tea here since the Tang Dynasty. This is the best time of year to pick Longjing tea. In 1905, the Russo-Japanese War ended with the defeat of the Russian Empire, and this small country in East Asia drew worldwide attention. Even at that time, most people's focus was only on Japanese Bushido culture. At this time, Japanese artist Okakura Tenshin, who was living in the United States, wrote in his book, The Book of Tea, If we must be regarded as civilized only by the cruel light of war, then we are content to be forever savage. If someday our skills and ideas will be given the respect they deserve, then we are also content to wait. So, more than 300 years after tea was introduced to Europe, the tea ceremony culture once again captivated the world. The Eastern philosophy and Zen speculation contained in it made the world have to re-examine this ancient custom in East Asia. Legend has it that in ancient China, Shen Nong, the mythical god and emperor, accidentally dropped a few leaves from a tree into the pot of boiling water he was preparing. The resulting infusion revitalized him, and the leaves that had fallen into the water were identified as tea leaves that had the ability to detoxify. Thus, the medicinal properties of tea were recorded in the classic Chinese text on herbal medicine, Shen Nong Ben Kao Jing. It is said that 6,000 years ago, People living in ancient East Asia began to eat tea leaves raw, or add them to soup or vegetables, or even ferment and chew them. The earliest written record about tea comes from China, where the character for two appears in the ancient book Book of Songs, although it may have referred to many different plants besides tea. The earliest physical evidence of tea was discovered in 2016 in the tomb of Emperor Jing of Han in Xi'an, China, indicating that the Chinese were already drinking tea in the 2nd century BC. The medical text of Hua Tuo from the Han Dynasty also mentioned that to drink bitter tea constantly makes one think better. This is a record of the Tang Dynasty tea culture by the tea master Lu Yu in his book The Classic of Tea. During the Tang Dynasty, tea culture began to spread widely in China. During the flourishing period of the Tang Dynasty, Zen Buddhism was popular and monks drank tea, making tea an important part of their in-depth philosophical and religious discussions. Tang Dynasty tea masters invented tea processing techniques called roasting and baking and green stemming, making tea more appealing to drink. With the completion of the Grand Canal, the transportation cost of tea was greatly reduced, and even ordinary citizens began to drink tea. In the Tang Dynasty, the production process of traditional tea ceremony was very complicated, which can be divided into several steps, such as preparing, offering, or serving, appreciating, sniffing, savoring, and drinking tea. As the Tang Dynasty flourished, tea ceremony as an art not only prevailed in China, but also influenced surrounding Asian countries. The Tea Horse Road is a trade route located in the mountainous regions of southwestern China, Yunnan and Tibet, and is also an important tea trade route for China. With the prosperity of tea culture in the Song Dynasty, China's monopoly on tea allowed them to use it as a powerful diplomatic tool. The government even set up a special administrative department to manage the Tea Horse Road and tea trade with the northwest region of China. In order to make the harvested tea easier to transport and prevent it from rotting, Chinese merchants ground the steamed and dried tea into powder, then compressed it into tea bricks. 
The method of putting the ground tea cake into a bowl, pouring hot water into it, and then vigorously stirring it with a bamboo whisk until it foams is called tencha. The tea ceremony is a typical Chinese ritual activity that involves the preparation and presentation of tea ceremonies. For over a thousand years, it has held significant cultural significance in China, where the finest tea is the most critical element, whether it be in formal tea ceremonies or tea art competitions. With tea that embodies the soul of the mountains and rivers, the essence of heaven and earth, and the loving care of man being the ultimate pursuit. Next is the high quality source of water, with the highest quality water in traditional tea ceremonies being tea ashui, rainwater or snow water collected using bamboo tubes or barrels. Lu Yu, in his classic of tea, established 20 different levels of water quality and described 24 different tea sets and methods of steeping tea. The most representative product in Japanese tea ceremonies is Uji Matcha, a method of production that originated from China's Song Dynasty's Tencha. In the 8th century, Japan sent multiple diplomatic missions to China's Tang Dynasty capital of Chang'an to learn about Chinese culture and technology. One of these monks, Saicho, learned about the tea ceremony while studying religion in China. He returned to Japan in 805 and brought back with him the habit of drinking tea and tea tree seeds, and is said to be the first person to plant tea trees in Japan. In 1191, a monk named Aisai returned from a trip to China and brought back with him the art of tencha and tea tree seeds that were successfully grown in Japan. Aisai wrote Japan's first book on tea, Drink Tea and Prolong Life, and presented it to Minamoto no Sanatomo, the third shogun of the Kamakura shogunate popularizing the tea ceremony culture among the samurai class. In 1582, the Japanese daimyo Oda Nobunaga was ambushed and killed by Akechi Mitsuhide at Honoji Temple. After Oda Nobunaga's death, Sen no Rikyu became Toyotomi Hideyoshi's tea master. As Japan's tea ceremony master, Sen no Rikyu comprehensively reformed and perfected the tea ceremony based on the work of his predecessors and his tea ceremony was strongly supported and promoted by Toyotomi Hideyoshi. After Sen no Rikyu's death, his promoted tea ceremony was inherited by his successors, evolved and developed into the present-day Japanese tea ceremony. Buddhist temples and monks have played a crucial role in the spread of tea culture. During the flourishing Tang Dynasty in China, Zen Buddhism was popular among monks who drank tea as a means of cultivating self-discipline and spirituality. Tea became an integral part of Buddhism, used for deep philosophical discussions and religious contemplation. Due to the widespread influence of Buddhism in Tang Dynasty China, many lay people followed the monks' example and began to drink tea, accelerating its spread and popularity among the general population. Zen Buddhism and tea culture were introduced to Japan simultaneously by Buddhist monks, resulting in a close spiritual connection between the two. Sen no Rikyu's principles of harmony, respect, purity, and tranquility share many similarities with Zen Buddhist philosophy, such as mindfulness, transience, and acceptance. The tea ceremony in East Asia also shares many similarities with Zen Buddhist practices. The Japanese aesthetic concept of wabi-sabi is rooted in the three marks of existence in Zen Buddhism. Wabi represents the internal or spiritual experience of human life, and the tea ceremony emphasizes the spiritual connection between host and guest. Drinking tea in a tea room is a form of meditation, a simple and natural process that helps individuals perceive the essence of things and transcend the limitations of the superficial world. In this environment, one can discover beauty in things they initially overlooked or found mundane and perceive the true nature of things, transcending the limitations of the false superficial world. Sabi means worn, weathered, or decayed, and is understood as beauty in imperfection, impermanence, and incompleteness. 
In tea culture, people no longer pursue luxurious things, but instead cherish rough and imperfect items, such as simple flower arrangements made from one or two seasonal flowers. The appearance of tea utensils deliberately carved to look rough and flawed, and their colors are based on the basic colors found in nature and faded colors to highlight perfection in imperfection. The commonality between tea culture and Zen Buddhism is the pursuit of spiritual tranquility and sublimation rather than physical pleasure. This is embodied in the simplicity and purity of the Chashitsu. The Chashitsu, as an independent building, was created under the guidance of two tea masters who brought humility and simplicity to its architecture. Takenoju used natural bamboo and raw wood, leaving the lattice and plaster on the walls exposed. Senno Rikyu transformed the Chashitsu into a small thatched roof pavilion called Soan Chashitsu, resembling a mountain hut. He limited its size, the number of decorations, utensils, and floral elements, and used simple materials like clay, straw, and unadorned wood. This new style of tea ceremony was named Wabicha. Traditional Japanese tea houses are usually surrounded by a garden called Roji, where guests often spend a long time in silent meditation and contemplation. The roji is the path leading to the chashitsu. Stripping away the noise of everyday life, the roji allows you to leave behind all mundane thoughts before entering the chashitsu. As Kakuzo Okakura, the author of the famous Book of Tea stated, the roji, the garden path which leads from the machiai to the tea room, signified the first stage of meditation, the passage into self-illumination. The roji was intended to break connection with the outside world and produce a fresh sensation conducive to the full enjoyment of aestheticism in the tea room itself. One who has trodden this garden path cannot fail to remember how his spirit, as he walked in the twilight of evergreens over the regular irregularities of the stepping stones, beneath which lay dried pine needles, and passed beside the moss-covered granite lanterns, became uplifted above ordinary thoughts. One may be in the midst of a city, and yet feel as if he were in the forest far away from the dust and din of civilization. There is always a water basin outside the chashitsu. This is for guests to wash their hands and rinse their mouth, a purification symbol still practiced in Japanese shrines and temples. Once crossing the boundaries of the chashitsu, all common thoughts are left behind. Time and space are now reserved for the appreciation of nature, art, and tea. Then take off your shoes and enter the tea room through the nijiraguchi. This low and square door is less than three feet tall, and adults must bend and stoop to enter. This door symbolizes the Zen concept of equality among all beings. Even a daimyo like Toyotomi Hideyoshi had to remove his sword before entering the tea room, then bend and stoop to crawl into the tea room. This door separates the serene tea room from the bustling outside world. The interior decoration of the tea room is also deeply influenced by Zen. The interior of the tea room is very simple, with decorations limited to calligraphy scrolls in wall niches and simple flower arrangements called chibana. Apart from these, the room is empty. This is a manifestation of the concept of beauty and imperfection, known as wabi-sabi. The average area of a tea room is only 4.5 tatami mats, which is equivalent to 10 square feet. This size requirement comes from the Zen Buddhist scripture Vimalakirti Sutra. Legend has it that Vimalakirti received Manjushri Bodhisattva and the Buddha's 84,000 disciples in a room of this size. This Buddhist-inspired number makes the space of the tea room abstract. Much like the theory in Buddhism that space is a kind of emptiness for those who reach the state of great wisdom. This is a chawan used for drinking tea. Tea masters choose different styles based on the thickness of the tea soup and seasonal differences. Before the tea ceremony, tea masters use chakin to wipe the chawan. The tea utensils used in the tea ceremony must be clean, which is precisely what Sen no Rikyu proposed as purity. In general matcha, the tea master puts tea powder and hot water into the chawan and then stirs them together with a chasen. When the guest receives the chawan from the host, they bow to each other, and then the guest rotates the chawan to avoid drinking from the front of the chawan. After drinking a few sips of tea, the guest wipes the rim of the bowl clean and passes it to the second guest. This process is then repeated until all guests have tasted the tea in the same chawan. During this process, each guest has the opportunity to appreciate the chawan in their hand. A tea ceremony can last up to four hours, depending on the type of tea room, the number of guests, and the type of tea. In the way of tea, there is no distinction of rank or status. Whether you are a noble, scholar, warrior, or farmer, you can feel the essence of life from a bowl of tea. Tea masters firmly believe that to truly appreciate art, one must make art a part of life. Tea ceremony is a comprehensive art, and many tea masters are skilled in various art forms. They have made countless contributions to the arts, not just in tea ceremony techniques. 
They have infused the spirit of tea ceremony into every art form, and every detail is executed to perfection. This notion of valuing the importance of small things in life is the central idea of tea ceremony.